let's talk. I think we've all been there. We've all gone to a meeting, or one of probably our first or second meeting, or been to our first or second event, and we screw up titling someone, or we mistitle ourselves. I remember my first meeting. I, I signed in as Lord. No idea that that was a title reserved for people who'd received a certain award, and uh, got some got pulled aside and had to explain to me. It was all fine. I mean, no one was rude about it, but let's be honest um the titles in the sca are a lot and if you're a new member oh my god it's a lot to learn it really is and we don't talk about it that much a lot of times we only seem to talk about it when we're poking someone in the ribs going no you don't call him that which really is a bad practice we need to be a little more proactive about that type of education and hence why we're here right now um i want to take a minute and I want to discuss with you some building blocks of what titles to use in conversation in the SC. Now, are we going to cover everything? No, we're not. That is, that would lead to a three-hour set of rabbit trails. It still wouldn't cover everything and would leave you with your eyes crossed. That's not the purpose of this video. I want to give you just enough information to, frankly, survive your first couple of weeks of conversations in the SCA, but more importantly, I want to give you enough information so that you can go ask better informed questions of the people around you and learn more. Because really, one of, the, one of the highlights of the SCA, one of the best parts about the SCA is learning about the SCA from the people around you. And that, that's what I want to encourage with this. So, first of all, um, let's Let's cover a couple of things here because there are a couple of important things that build into this talking point that we're not going to cover in this video. First of all, the, the titles I'm going to use are going to be largely recognized as English language titles. Why is that? The SCA started with a very ad hoc model of rank that was largely based off of a um, perhaps sketchy understanding of rank within the English medieval court. Um, and the SCA was a largely European-centric, or was entirely European-centric uh, when it was created and has only very slowly grown out. Does that mean that you, as a player, are locked into any of these titles? No. Let me tell you right now, with very few exceptions, you are encouraged, not only allowed, but encouraged to research alternatives to any of these titles to better reflect your persona or your field of interest. Do you want to be styled as someone, as a noble or an armager from Korea, from China, from Japan, from any of the North African settlements, from uh, Persia, the Americas? We're learning more about indigenous cultures almost every day. So we're going to discuss the oldest terms in use in the SCA. Please don't assume that that is any sort of limit on you. It's simply I'm using the common language, the most commonly used titles. I'm using the terms and titles that are referenced in um, the documents that discuss this type of thing. Please understand that these are guides and waypoints. They are not limits. So, that part out of the way. Item two, titles are directly reflective of the rank of the person you're talking to. How do you know what their rank is? That's another conversation. If you're from Onsteora, um, I have a video series. I'll make sure there's a link in the uh, show notes below. I've done a series on all of the awards uh, in Onsteora, and I encourage you to, if you want, Go check those out, watch those videos. That will give you the best primer, the best starting point, in my opinion, for um, what the insignia are for Onstioran awards. Now, if you're outside of Onstioran, or if you're going to visit outside of Onstioran, you're going to have to do your own homework and go find out what those awards are. Because there's a lot of kingdoms, and I've only lived in one and played in a handful. I can only speak from experience and my knowledge base. 
Now, last but not least, um, the like I said, award structure in the SCA, on top of being a rough amalgam of a very rough understanding of the very few European traditions, um, not all kingdoms do it exactly the same. So I'm going to talk about how Aunt Stewart does it. Please understand, especially for when we talk about, you'll recognize the term when we get there, when we get to the grant of arms tier, some kingdoms do grants of arms to do that tier of rank very differently than Anstior does. So, it is very important, again, if you are not an Anstior, or if you're visiting outside of Anstior and you want to know more about this, please talk to a local herald about um, this information and, and better educate yourself about how it's done where you are. I am not an expert in other kingdoms. I have my experience in Anstior and that's what I'm building on here. So, Preamble aside, let's talk about ranks and titles. Generally speaking, there are four tiers of rank in Anstior. You have the non-armidious awards. Those are, they carry no rank. You can receive as many as you want and they don't advance your rank in the least. You have the armidious awards. Also, someone who's received an armagist award is sometimes referred to as an armager. Or these awards are referred to as awards of arms, or AOAs. The next tier up is the grant level awards. And then, above the grants are the peerages. Now, there is a, a quote-unquote tier above that, but now you're getting into um, nobility and royal family. So, let's start at the bottom. Like I said, the non armidious awards. Um, I talked about it in my videos. These awards don't carry any rank. If you do not have any award at all, or you only have non armidious awards or a non armidious award, that's all you have, you have no title. If you're talking to someone who has no awards, they have no title. You would refer to them by first name. Um, if you need to be super formal, you know, like in the modern society, we say yes, sir, or no, sir. Well, obviously, sir is uh, uh, kind of a reserved term. We'll get to that in a minute, but you know what I'm talking about. Um, if you need to be super formal, you may refer to them. You may go, my lord or my lady. M apostrophe L-O-R-D or M apostrophe L-A-D-Y. That's an honorific, but it carries, that doesn't denote rank. It's not a reserved title. Some people use that for anyone who doesn't have a rank is kind of a I don't want people to feel left out that's not a position I currently share um, if you don't have rank I'm just going to refer to you by your first name you can still be polite about it but if you have no rank generally speaking there's no title so there's no title now the next tier like I said is armature or AOA a word of arms now I've explained this previously but I'll say it here again People hear a word of arms, like arms, as in heraldry? Yes. The word we're using, armager, or a word of arms, is referring to the historical practice that says you may not display heraldry unless you've been given permission by the crown. And historically, people who displayed heraldry when they didn't have an award of arms, that was a severely punishable offense in some cases by execution. Now, Anstior does not place any restrictions on display of heraldry. In fact, the SCA does not dis uh, place any restrictions on heraldry based on rank. You may register and display your heraldry whenever you want, no matter what awards you do or don't have. But the term armiguous or armiger or award of arms, those, those phrases are artifacts, as it were, of the actual history of this this type of rank. So understand that when you hear a word of arms or armager, that's where the word's coming from. It has functionally it has nothing to do with you have permission to or not display heraldry. What do you call someone if they have an award of arms? Or if they are an armager? That's what that's one of the more formal ways you can describe someone who is a uh, who's received their award of arms. They are an armager, but that's not a title. That's just a descriptor. What do you call them? 
Lord or Lady. Those are the most, by far and wide, by leaps and bounds, the most common titles. Are there alternatives? Yes, there are. And again, if you are playing a persona from a culture outside of, frankly, England, I encourage you to do some homework. Go read up. See what other terms there are. And if you find something you like, go ask Heralds about it. Or if you don't know where to look, go talk to the Heralds, see if they have any recommendations, because that's one of the great parts of the SCA is you get to do that type of research. You get to learn that little bit more about the culture you're trying to play. Okay, moving up. Grants of arms. This is one of the ones where I'm going to warn you. This is how Ans Deora does it. Different kingdoms do it differently. In some kingdoms, the very different take on grants of arms. So, just be aware. In Ans Deora, um, there is a grant of arms for each of our tracks, each of our, our, our chivalric fighting, our rapier fighting, our services, our arts and sciences. We also have uh, grants for thrown weapons, and we have a grant for equestrian. I, by the way, I am a grant holder. I hold a grant of arms, and mine is this is a star of merit for service to the kingdom of Ansteora. And if you hold a grant, for most holders of a grant of arms, you are referred to as lordship or ladyship. Now, quick side note here. For the longest time, one of the other terms that was used was Honorable Lord or Honorable Lady. Now, there's two reasons why I encourage people to get away from that. Number one, and, and primarily, we now understand that there is extremely questionable historical provenance behind that. Honorable Lord and Honorable Lady, we now understand there's less and less documentation than we thought suggesting people actually used that title. The other reason is, is there are certain kingdoms within the SCA that never use that title, and when they hear other people use it, I am Honorable Lord, or I am Honorable Lady, or he is an Honorable Lord, it comes across as bragging. It, it, they read it, they see it, and they assume you are bragging about how honorable you are, which is can be seen as confrontational or condescending. And I've, I've seen some conversations go south, and we had to, like, stop ever and go, no, 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 wait, wait, this is how it's done over there. It's one of the ways they style themselves for this rank. So it's, it's just a messy term. It's not historical. It's not something that we should encourage using. It's not something that I use anymore. So honorable order, honorable lady, if you hear people use it, they're referring to grant of arms. There's still people that use that title. But the more proper, more traditional term is lordship or ladyship. Now, there's one more exception. There's always an exception, always one more exception. For our heavy weapons fighters, the grant level award is the Order of the Centurion of the Sable Star. You probably heard Centurion and immediately perk up at that because you know what a Centurion is. That is a direct reference to the Imperial Roman military officer's rank. And a centurion, the, the, it's actually an order, and becoming a member of the order does in fact carry a grant of arms. So if someone has been given, if someone has been made a member of the order of the centurion, they can call themselves lordship or ladyship, uh, his lordship, her ladyship, you know, and then their first name. But they may also be called Centurion, the exact same way we would use a modern-day U.S. Army Captain's rank. Um, centurion, or, you know, like my father, um, when I was a little child, was uh, Captain Sibidanus. Of course, modern military used the last name. Um, today, you would use... Uh, He's a knight now, but I remember Centurion Romanus. Um, and I remember uh, jokes about when he was only a Centurion, uh, Centurion Rabbit, or now he's Sir uh, Caius. But 
you get the idea, Centurion first name. So if you hear someone go by the name Centurion, understand that is one of our grant level awards. Okay, next we have the peerages. Now there are actually five peerages, and I know some of you are twitching going, wait, there are only four. Hear me out. There are five peerages. You have the Knight, the Master at Arms, Master of Defense, the Laurel, and the Pelican. The Knight and Master at Arms are co-equal peers in the chivalric fighting arts. I'm emphasizing this because there are some misconceptions about Master at Arms. Some people perceive them as less than knights, which is absolutely not true. These are co-equal peers. However, only a knight may be referred to by the title Sir or Dame. All the other peerages, Master of Defense, Master at Arms, Laurel, Pelican, are traditionally referred to with the titles Master or Mistress. Now, there's exception to every rule and there's a couple of important exceptions and notes here. First of all, let's start with a knight. Most knights, men and women, go by the title Sir. I remember um, when they made uh, Britta McGregor a knight and she chose to go by Sir Britta, as I recall. It was ages ago uh, when I had that conversation, but she could technically style herself as Dame Britta McGregor because Dame is the appropriate title, or is a appropriate title that a woman can use as a member of the chivalry. She chose Sir. Um, I know uh, I know of, I never had a chance to meet her, but I know of Sir Sif, who, another woman who was, who was a knight and who chose Sir. And technically, there are, you know, the, any member of any peerage could choose an alternative title that's reflective of that rank. But every knight I know, especially every guy knight I know, chose Sir. So, if they're a knight, Sir is your absolute, overwhelming, safest bet. Now let's talk about all the other peerages. What do you call them? This is interesting because, like I said, the proper terms are master or mistress. And this is, this is actually historical. Um, and master is a commonly used form of address. In the modern martial arts, we refer to uh, instructors as master black belts. And um, some disciplines call them senseis. Others do use the English term master. Um, there are uh, certain uh, artistic schools in England and uh, continental Europe where you address someone as master. So this is a historical and modern title system that is used. But also, the terms master or mistress do carry some very significant social connotations on a number of fields. And some people, some members of the peerages, are not comfortable with that. And they elect to research alternative titles. Now, what alternative titles do they use? Oh boy, that's a list. There's nothing wrong with that list. It's just long. And there's no rule of thumb here. So, where does this relate to you? If you are speaking to someone who you know is a peer, first of all, if you know they're a knight, just go with sir. If they don't use sir for some reason, I'm sure they're used to going, oh no, by the way, I use this title. So, you know, problem solved. If you are speaking to a peer, and you have no other information, you don't know of any alternatives that they use or any reason they wouldn't use master or mistress, you have two options. You may take an educated guess and say, yes, master, yes, mistress, or, you know, address them as master or mistress. That's absolutely valid. And if they are using an alternative, 
they probably are very used to going, I, by the way, I go by explaining that. Or if you uh, want to be extra careful or maybe you are uncomfortable using the term master or mistress, like I said, those can be very loaded terms for on a number of levels for different people. You may ask them, excuse me, how do you prefer to be styled? And they will tell you what term they use. Okay, so we've covered peerage, we've covered grant of arms, we've covered armager, and we've covered non armiger. Is that everything? No, we've still got a few more to go. Barons and baronesses. Now, the reality is, in Ontario specifically, there are two types of barons and baronesses there's landed nobility, and there is court nobility. The difference between those two is, frankly, irrelevant for this purpose, or for this conversation. If they have a brass hat on their head, and they are a baron or baroness, the title is Your Excellency. And baronial coronets have certain insignia, and I believe it, it, it's, uh, I don't know if it's regulated society level or by kingdom, but there are ways to tell a baronial coronet apart from other coronets. We'll get to the others in a second. If they are a baron or baroness, your excellency. And that's a full word. Um, you, you don't even use uh, a name with that. I mean, you can say, like, my local baron is His Excellency Isaac Bain and Her Excellency uh, Edwin. But you could, if you're talking to them or even about them, you would say Your Excellency, Their Excellency, and so forth. Another brass hat that can be worn is that of prince and princess. The uh, Now we're getting into royal family. If you are a prince or princess, you are referred to as your highness. Now, on Stiura, it's not an exception, but we want to make things complicated. We have two sets of prince and princesses or frankly two sets of, of royals at that level. It's because we have a principality. We have territorial royals, the territorial royalty, the territorial prince and princess of the principality of Vindham. And we have the royal heirs, the victor and consort from crown tournament who in a few months will ascend the throne and become king and queen. How do we differentiate them apart? And it's not that you're ever going to, it's not that you're ever going to differentiate them in conversation. It's not that you're going to style them differently. They're all prince and princess and you're, you're going to say your highness talking to any of them. Full stop. But if you are talking to someone else about the prince and princess, how do we differentiate them? Well, there's there's a couple of ways. In Anstiora, we have informally taken to, at least currently, this may change, for the prince and princess of Vindheim, we refer to them as their serene highnesses. If we are talking about the prince and princess who are going to become the crown, we refer to them as the heirs, the royal heirs of Anstior with the heirs. But in either case, if you are engaged with any of these people or one of them has turned to you to say something and given you a direction, the proper term of address is your highness. Full stop, don't even need to worry about a name. Yes, your highness, no, your highness, full stop. Either gender works. Now, let's move up. Top of the order is the crown. The king and queen, or kings, queens, or whatever the gender combination is at the moment. What do you call them? Your Majesty. Full stop, simple enough. His Majesty, Her Majesty. If talking to them, Your Majesty, easy enough. If it's the crown, it is Your Majesty. If you don't know how to identify the crown, Every kingdom does it differently. It's usually you got to learn to recognize one of maybe two or three different sets of coronets. Uh, you'll learn over time. But if you're talking to someone who it is readily apparent is the crown, the title is, yes, your majesty, or no, your majesty, or right away, your majesty, you get the idea. No, wait, we're not done. So, we're going to go back down the rank ladder here. If someone has been crown of Ansteora one time and has successfully completed their term and stepped down, 
they are given the rank, they are given their county and made count or countess. So, and that's another brass hat. Count and countess has a brass hat. What do you call a count or countess? Well, this is actually really simple. Again, it's your excellency. So, if you hear someone referred to as a count or countess, you refer to them as your excellency. Now, if they have completed a six-month term as prince or princess of Vindheim and stepped down, they are given their vice county, or sometimes pronounced viscounty, which makes them a vice count or vice countess. Also, again, said viscount or viscountess. What do you refer to them as? How would you style them? That's again. It's actually really simple. Your Excellency. We we keep, that part actually is fairly simple. If someone walks up to you with a brass hat, simply playing the odds, you are statistically likely to be right if you call them Your Excellency. Are you always going to be right? No. There's a good chance that they could have a higher rank. They may be a peer. All right. So you've we've got. Counts, we've got vice counts, countesses, vice countesses, all your excellency. Okay, we're done. Nope, got one more. If someone has served as crown of Anstiora two times and successfully stepped down, they are given their duchy and they are referred to as duke or duchess. And that, it's a different coronet. Actually, it's usually the county coronet with three strawberry leaves on the front. The three strawberry leaves are the protected insignia that notes a duchy. They are referred to as your grace. So that's one of the big exceptions. If you see a coronet and it's got three strawberry leaves on it, that is a duke or duchess. That's referred to as your grace. Are we done? Yes, that's as far as I really want to go with this conversation because I could rabbit trail in a hundred different directions. But there's so much more to learn about titles and ranks and, and protocol and how to address people. And I, I want you to learn that. I want you to understand and just begin to wrap your head around this really wild and sometimes uh, kind of hectic system we have going. But I'm hoping that this information lets you understand enough that you can more easily and confidently learn more and better enjoy the SCA. So I hope this is helpful. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below in the comments. And uh, I look forward to hearing from you. But until next time, see you at the next event. Goodbye, and God bless.